Good afternoon. We're going to work on um, kind of a review today. And the first thing we need to know, it's, it's going to review several things that we've worked on in practice. And the first thing it says, identify each of the following below. First thing we have to do is we have to know the slope formula. And the slope formula is m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now, that, all that says is given two points. If I have two points, two ordered pair, x and y, that's one point, point number one, then that's x sub 1, y sub 1. And if I have point number two, the values are x and y, then they'll be labeled x sub 2, y sub 2. We'll get to that when we get right down here. Then we have the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. So that is y equals mx plus b. Now, you should remember that b is where you begin on the y-axis. We just mark that that point on the y-axis, and then that's where we start, or we begin to count our slope. And this is our slope. And it is the change in y over the change in x. So it would be like uh, 4 thirds or something like that. And then I would count and I would rise, and then I would run, because your slope is rise for the y and run for the horizontal line or the x-axis. Then down here on the far end, we have the standard form of a linear equation. Standard form is going to be ax plus by equals C. And all that is is A equals the coefficient of X. That just means it's the number in front of X. And B is the coefficient of Y. And C is the constant. And the constant is just the number. Okay. So those are the three things that you're supposed to know. Uh, the three formulas is slope formula is M equals Y sub two minus Y sub one over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Your slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. And then your standard form is ax plus by equals c. All right, it says right here, it says find the slope of the line shown on the graph. The slope of the line shown on the graph. Well, we have a point here and we have a point here. So it depends on where we count is, is whether we're going to rise or go down or rise and go up. So because I like to rise, I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to go this way. Now that goes parallel with the Y axis. So that's why it rises and I'm going up. So that's going to be plus three. Now, the reason I went up plus three is because that puts me on the same focus with this dot here, with this point. So I went up three. Now I'm going over one, two, three, four, but I'm going in a negative direction on the x-axis. So that's minus four. So to get from here to here, my y changes a positive three. 
So that's my rise or my Y. And then I run on the horizontal and it goes in a negative direction. It goes to the left on your Y axis, on your X axis here, it goes to a negative direction. So it's negative four. So my slope is three over negative four. So as you can see, when you read from left to right, when I read from left to right, this line goes down, so it is a negative slope. So that's another way to check yourself to make sure you did it correctly. So your slope is three over negative four. Could it be negative three over positive four? Yes, it can, because if I started counting from here first, if I had started here to find out how Y changed and how X changed to get to here, then I would have gone down, I would have gone a minus three, and then I would have gone this way, and that would have been a positive four. So my Y would have changed, my change in Y, would have been a negative three and my change in X, the X axis would be a positive four. So negative three over four and three over negative four are both negative, both negative slopes. So it doesn't matter which way you write it. It can be this one or this one, or you can just write negative out here and put three over four. But when you count it, you've either got to put your negative with the three or your negative with the four. Okay, let's move on to this next one. And I have a point here and a point here. So you should be able to count that one yourself. Um, but I'm going from here up to here, so that's plus. And then I'm going over this way, and that's plus. That's plus four. I'll just go ahead and work this one. And this one is plus eight. Okay, so my Y changed plus eight. My X changed plus four. What's eight divided by four? It's two. So my slope is two. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, look. Here's a point, here's a point, here's a point. I went up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. Two over one is the same as two. So that one works. Okay, this one is special. It is, this is the line right here. It is a vertical line. It is a vertical line. It goes straight up and down. You can't climb a mountain that goes straight up. You can't measure it because you can't get up there. So it's a vertical line. <clears throat> we have that saying called VUX, V-U-X, because if it's a vertical line, the slope is undefined. So VUX, vertical slope, vertical line, undefined slope, and it crosses the X axis. And this line does cross the x-axis. And everywhere on that line, the value of x is four, because this is four, zero. This point would be four, one, two, three, four, three. And then down here, this point would be four, negative three. So everywhere on that line, the x value is 4. So your equation for that one would be x equals 4. 
your slope is undefined. <clears throat> Practice a couple of these with you and then uh, you'll have to do some of them for yourself because you need that practice. Okay, we'll just start with this one up here and we'll label it X sub one, Y sub one x sub two, y sub two. I got two points, so I have to do y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two, <coughs> excuse me, minus x sub one. So I'm gonna take y sub two, which is negative six, and I'm gonna subtract negative four, okay? Because I have to subtract and then y sub one is negative four, so I have to do it like that. And then I have x sub two, which is negative four, and I have to subtract x sub one, which is one. Okay, for this one, that minus negative four, you add the opposite because that says it's the opposite of negative four, which makes it a positive four. So I have negative six plus four is negative two. And then here I got negative four minus one plus negative one. Negative four plus negative one is negative five. When I divide and I have two negatives, two negative integers, two integers, that are negative, then that makes a positive. So my slope is two fifths. Okay, you're gonna do that on five and six. You need to do those by yourself or talk to someone that can help you visualize that. Now we're going to do this one. This is X sub one, this is Y sub one. This is X sub two. This is y sub two. And all I'm doing is trying to find the slope. So I'm gonna say y sub two, which is negative seven minus negative seven divided by x sub two minus x sub one, which is four. So again, I have, I add the opposite. So I have negative seven plus seven, which those are the additive inverses. That gives me zero. And I have two minus four. Two plus negative four, which is gonna give me negative two. Zero divided by anything is zero. So the slope here is zero slope. Okay, if I have zero slope, not zero slope, but zero slope, then my y values do not change. So my equation, they didn't ask for that, but you need to know this because, because this is poi, because this is another special slope, zero slope and undefined slope. So zero slope is hoi, which is horizontal line. Zero slope. Y axis. So this would be Y values. So Y equals negative seven. Okay, uh, moving on, we're going to, let's see, graph each equation using the slope intercept form, okay?
Okay, let's look at, um, well, first of all, let's look at eight. And this is y equals mx plus b. Well, to graph it in slope-intercept form, I need to know what b is. So b equals, well, b equals six. And m equals the number in front of x. Well, I don't have a number in front of x. Yes, I do. It's understood to be one. So m equals one. For it to be a counting slope, I'd go one over one. All right, where do I begin? I begin at six on the y-axis. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six on the y-axis. My slope is one over one. So I count up one, over one, put a point. Up one, over one, put a point. But I don't have any going the other way. Well, I can count negative one over negative one because that's the same as one over one. So from my beginning, my B, I can go negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. And there's your line. On this one, I would suggest you put the negative with a three or put it with, I mean, the negative with the five or with the three. And you can graph this either of these two ways. Now we're going to this one. You can do this one for yourself. This is the equation. This is B, this is M. So all you have to do is count it. This is also, I just put the negative with the five there and the negative is with the three here. Depends on which way you want to count. Number 11 is not in y equals mx plus b form. The constant is here. So I need to fix that by going y equals negative 4x minus 2. Addition is commutative. You have learned that already. So y equals, I just moved the negative 4 over here, and I moved the negative 2 over here. So now that's your equation. Your slope is m, which is there. So m equals negative four. I can put it over one to count. And b is negative two. That equals b. So you plot that, negative two. That would go right here. And then I got four over, negative four over one, or I could do four over negative one, which is what I prefer to do because I don't have the rest of the graph here at the moment. So I'm going to go up from the beginning, which this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. B is where it, where the point is where I begin on the y-axis, so that's negative two. My slope is four over negative one, so I rise one, two, three, four, and I go negative one. I go one, two, three, four, negative one. And there's your line. And it'll go all the way down. And you can get that other point down here that's negative four, positive one, which is right in here somewhere. So that'll work too. All right, go about one more thing and then I'll be through and you can work the rest of them. Okay, for these, they want you to convert to slope-intercept form. Right now, these are in standard form. You need to know that. Uh, when you start doing standardized tests, you're going to see more of that. You're going to see more in a standard form. But this is 
AX plus BY equals C. And for it to be in slope-intercept form, I need it to be Y equals MX plus B. So I need my Y by itself over here. So this is 6X plus negative 2Y. To make this go away, this 6X, I'm going to subtract 6X because it's added to 2Y. So if I subtract it here and subtract it here, I move it without changing the value. So now I have negative 2Y equals negative 6X minus 14. All right? I still need it in Y equals MX plus B4. I'm almost there. I almost have the Y by itself. This is negative 2 times Y. So to undo multiplication, you use the inverse and the inverse is to divide by negative two. If I do it to this side of the equation, the equal sign, I gotta do it to the other side also. So I have y equals three x plus seven. All right, I got it. This is b, three over one, this is m. I just have to graph it. So it starts at seven. It begins at seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the y-axis. Now it wants me to go up three, up three over one. Can't do that. So I could say negative three, negative one. So from seven, I'm going down three, I'm going down three, negative one. I go down three, negative one, down three, negative one, down three, negative one. I can keep going, use a ruler to make straight lines so you know what you're doing. Okay. You should be able to do the rest of these on your own. This one, when you subtract X and you subtract X, you have a negative Y here equals negative X minus three. You can't solve for negative Y. So what do you divide by? What is the coefficient of Y here? What is the coefficient of Y? Well, it's understood to be negative one. So if I have a negative one there to get Y by itself, I'm going to divide by negative one, divide by negative one, divide by negative one. Y equals X plus three. So that just means it crosses the Y axis at three and then you can count the slope. M equals one. Now for the X and Y intercepts, go down just a little farther. I'm gonna do 16 for you. Uh, 16 is if you do the X and Y intercepts, you don't have anything to graph. You don't know where the line is. So that's why I'm going to help you with that one. Because to do X and Y intercepts, we've already practiced that. So for X and Y intercepts, if, if Y is zero, then that's not there. So I've hidden Y because y is zero, so it's not there. So what I have is x equals five. I have x equals five. So there it is. When y is zero, x equals five. Now I'm gonna make x zero. So if I make x zero, that's not there. I have negative y equals five. 
Now that's not y equals five. So I have to divide by negative one. And now I have y equals negative five. All right, there it goes. So this is the y-intercept. That means the y-axis, the point where it crosses is negative five. One, two, three, four, five. This is the x-intercept because y is zero. So x is five, one, two, three, four, five. There's my point. It crosses the x-axis. That's why it's called the x-intercept. And there's your line. Oh, okay, that one really wasn't the one I thought it was going to be. All right, that's good. The rest of these you can do. Um, you can do pretty well by yourself. This one, x and y intercepts. Um, again, make your table. If x is zero, then that's not there. So you have to get rid of the negative 10 by dividing. So y equals negative two. Hmm, okay. But on this other one, If I let y be zero, if y is zero, then I have 16x equals 20. So I have to divide by 16, divide by 16, and x equals 20 over 16. Well, if you divide that out, I divide by four, that's five over four which is really one and one fourth. So on the X axis, this one, on the X axis, I go over one and one fourth, and there's the point. And for Y, it's negative two, there's the point. And that's all you gotta have to graph the line. All right, you do the rest of them. You should do okay. Um, if you're working it in class, because I'm not here today, uh, the teacher has the answer key and you can check your work to make sure you've got them right. If you need help, ask someone. Miss uh, Anderson is here and so is Miss Shaw. So if you need help, be sure to reach out to them. You have a nice weekend. Talk to you later. Bye.